<sighs> Yo, I'm FSG Rail, and I just jumped off the porch for Dirty Glove Bastard. Let's get it. Up in Marty fashion, Mr. Gucci with my Valentinos. In my hood, it's a regular shootout, but it sounds like we throwing torpedoes. All right, so we got FSG Rail off the porch with us today. Let's get it. How you feeling, man? I feel great. How you doing? I'm doing great, man. Yeah, appreciate you coming by today, no, I appreciate man. you for having me, for no, sure. No problem, man. So what, what have you been working on here in Atlanta, man? Uh, you said here in Atlanta? Mm-hmm. Well, I got a couple of projects I want to work on out here. I got a studio I'm looking up. It's called La House. I've been around. I'm trying to get around there. I know a couple of engineers in there. So I'm definitely trying to get tapped in out here with the studios. I like going to different studios because everyone is going to get your different vibe. It's okay. different engineers, you know what I'm saying? So fresh new ideas for each project, and that's how we do it. I feel that, man. Do you sure. come down here pretty often to work or not too much? Yeah, I was just out here probably two months ago. I'm from Pottstown, PA. So, you know I mean, it's like 40 minutes from Philly. So back and forth, back and forth. It's literally like every month and a half, I found myself back here. Like I'm coming back next month. Like, okay. So I'm definitely around here. Yeah. Staying working, man. That's what's up. Yeah, I stamp it. Yeah. All right, so like you mentioned, Pottstown, Pennsylvania. You know what I'm I had to Google this, man. I'm not yeah. gonna lie, man. So uh, talk to us about life in Pottstown. What what is there to do? What goes on down there? Man? Yeah, a lot of people don't know about Pottstown. It's a small town. It's probably like ten, fifteen thousand. It feel like five thousand because half of them is old, like it be. So they'll come outside. So it be. It's the same thing as like any other city, though. It's just so compact so everybody know everybody it's not like it's a big west end it's a big east end or something like, like it's not really like that it's really just one big city everything going on just like a regular city would you know but everybody know everybody you know everything about everybody mostly when new niggas, when new people pop up you're like oh who that like what they got going on shit like that so it's like any other city it's just small okay for sure what was your childhood like? What were you getting into as a kid? Like from the jump, I was a bad young boy from the jump. Like I had got kicked out of a couple of schools, but like going through it, I really found the school that, that worked with me around my area. I feel like it's all about just finding that one place that's going to fuck with you and just try to work with you for real. If you end up at a bad school, they not really going to try to work with you like that. The first couple of things you do, they going to try to get you. But if you end up at a good school or a place that you know a couple of people, they'll try to work with you and they'll get you through whatever you got going on. Yeah. That's that. for real. Yeah. At what age would you say you jumped off the porch? I jumped off the porch probably like, probably like 15 for sure. At like 13, I was into some shit, but it wasn't really nothing major. It just like me and a couple of friends, we were starting some shit up. But at 15, that's when I really got into it. A couple of my folks was coming home from jail. He was older than me, so I started running with them a lot. And so, 15 for sure, the age. 15. Okay. Did you go to college after school? Yeah, I went to college for like a year and a half. Then one day, I just was in class. I was just like, this shit so disrespectful to me. I just, <laughs> yeah, man, it was so disrespectful. I was like, I'm, what am I, I'm sitting here taking a test on something I'm not going to have to use. And they talking about this, how smart? Nah. So, a year and a half, then after that, that was it. Never went back. What were you studying? What did you think you were going to be? I thought I was going to be an actuary. What is that? From my understanding, it's like a, <laughs> you me? I got to say from my understanding. From my understanding, it's somebody that works in like an insurance company, and they break down how the rates go and why. Say like, say I got, say I'm 36 or something, and I got to see he's 16 and he about to go on my insurance. That would be the person to tell you how much it would go up and why it would go up. Something like that, from what I know. So I was a little, you know what I'm saying, in school, I was good, I was good in grade, like my grades and math class, all that. So when they tell you to pick what you was gonna do, they just was recommending math majors to me. So I was like, it said 100,000 a year, so I was like, I'm just gonna pick it. Oh, so you, you were strictly based off income. So yeah, yeah. So I was about to ask, I don't think I've ever heard anyone say, I want to be insurance <laughs> <laughs> That's a fact. And at the time, I really didn't know what it was. I just picked it. Yeah. Like, they make you sit down and pick something, so I just picked it. And you know, A is right at the top. It's short and simple. Done. Yeah. So a year and a half is like, 
<laughs> this was a bad idea. Yeah, man, like just sitting there trying to take the test. I'm just like, this is so disrespectful. <laughs> Not trying to say I'm above college or nothing, but it just was like, what am I doing here? Like, I'm better than that. Like, I'm just sitting here taking the test on something I don't even really fuck with. It's not me, so I just was like, I'm out. Yeah. That's, that was it. I feel you, man. So how long have you been making music now? When's your first start? I'm 22 now. I'm about to be 23 in like 10 days. Yeah, man. Gemini season. Okay. So probably about three years, seriously. Like three years, seriously. But I've always been doing music since I was like 13. I've always been doing music. Like going to football games, battling at them Jones, you know. So I like always been in and out of music, but I started taking it seriously like three years ago, for sure. What happened three years ago that motivated you to say, "Man, I'm gonna put my all into this now"? That's when I stopped doing school, and I was like, <laughs> "This, this, this is me." Yeah, I stopped fighting it. I stopped trying to do what everybody else wanted me to do, and I started doing the shit that I really wanted to do. Like music's what I want to do. I don't want to sit in no classroom or. Be no insurance agent, you know I mean? So that's what it is. Okay. Who were some of your favorite rappers you were listening to that kind of inspired you to start at first? Uh, like 50 Cent, Meek Mill coming up, Flamers. You know I'm East Coast, Pottstown, Philly. Um, but I'm getting a lot of inspiration right now, man. It's a lot of people my age that I'm inspired by that I fuck with hard. Um, yeah, it's more East Coast people, you know, because that's, that's where I'm located. So... I heard a lot of East Coast niggas. So that's where I really be tapped in there. Okay. So FSG, what does it stand for? It stands for Finally Stamp Gang. You know what I'm saying? FSG Raw. Let's get it. Did you come up with that? It was me and my my man Uno. We had came up with it in the world. We was we was in some other shit, but we was like, no, we about to do our own shit. We we bigger than that. Like I said, we not local, we global. So he was like, we're gonna start some other shit. So we just start coming up with shit. I'm like, yeah, we finally stamped. Like, we stamped for real. Like, we didn't did so much. We stamped now, like, regardless what anybody said, we stamped. So okay. that's how we came up with that. And that's now your label now, too, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it, it just came so much in a little bit of time. Are you the only artist on the label, or do you have other artists? No, nah, we all dip and dabble in there. I'm probably the only serious one that's taking it 100%. But you know how you got groups and everybody different devil. They all do their thing though. Everybody's solid. Okay. We got a tape on the way, FSG tape. It's gonna go crazy. For sure. Who's some of the other artists then? Uh some of the other artists is Meech. My brother, he be fucking with us. His name Gunna. Um it's a lot of different it's a lot of different styles on there. Like some people just strictly rap, some people do a little bit of singing rap. And you know, you know how people just talk about street shit. We got some other people that, that's more on the conscience side. So the whole tape is gonna be it's gonna be such a blessing because it's gonna be so many different styles blended into one. Yeah. So talk to us about the the grind and some of the challenges that come with being an independent artist and having your own label as well. Being an independent artist and having your own label, it, it's such a grind because you literally have to do everything for yourself. You got to start all by yourself. You, And if you don't have nobody that you know, like, you know how some people have a big brother and stuff like that. I'm from such a small city. Ain't nobody that, that did music before me out there that took it to the levels that we're trying to take it. Like, everybody did music, you know what I'm saying? But it wasn't like somebody tried to really take it to the next level. Well, as far as from I know, I don't know everybody that was over me, I mean, like older than me, but from the people I know. Like they rap, but they wouldn't take it all the way. Like we try and do it. Yeah. So it's like being on your own, it's a lot harder. You gotta navigate through some things. You gotta learn shit that, that some people would put you on to. You gotta learn for yourself. You gotta get burnt a couple of times. Like this shit is for real. And you got other people that you try and put D to something else. And it's like, you still learning as you doing it. So everything is not smooth like, it's, like, like it would be if you like with a bigger label and all that. So it's definitely a process. I feel that. What would you say was one of the biggest mistakes you made as an artist? Or if there's some advice you could give the other artists on not to make that same mistake? Some advice, I'm gonna do the mistakes right there. Some advice would be, make sure who you're dealing with, is like you could trust them. 
Like, it's so hard because you're you're a new artist. Somebody hop in your DM, or you know what I'm saying? Like, you know how it is. Somebody hop in your DM, or somebody selling you this dream. Ah, ah, I could do this. Woo, woo, woo. And it's like you never really know. You're dealing with strangers. And, and like in another department, like I'm not working with somebody I don't know like that. I'm not doing that. But in this business, you have to take risks. So it's like you never really know. So you got to do double, triple checks to make sure everything's solid. Like probably the biggest mistake, like one of the mistakes. It's just piggyback off of that trustworthy shit. Like I just sent so much bread to people and it not being what it is. But it's just from me not knowing. And there's certain signs you could pick out. Now I could pick him out with certain signs. Oh, nah, he bullshitting or this ain't right. Da, 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 da. So it's definitely like that, for sure. I feel that. So is there much of a music scene in uh, Pottstown? Oh, yeah. The music scene jumping. Okay. It's a lot of people doing music in Pottstown. It's like a lot of people be like, everybody trying to do music now. Da, 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 da. You know how people be, but I fuck with it. Because you, one, you never know what could happen. Two, ain't nothing wrong with just doing it for fun either. If you're just doing it for fun, music is fun. Create music is fun. Ain't nothing wrong with that. So it's like, I fuck with it as a whole, for real. There's definitely some solid people from Pottstown I fuck with. Some older people that I started listening to, they got me into it. D1, Tay Russ, Mug, like, they helped me get into it, like, as far as just listening to this shit as a young boy. And they, they inspired me for real, so. Yeah, I fuck with it as a whole. Is there any nice studios out there, or do you have to rely on going to Philly or even down here to Atlanta to get that good quality sound? You know, it's definitely some nice studios in Pottstown. It's one in particular. It's called Brownstone Media. My man, Maddie, he's solid. But it's, it's definitely nice studios in Pottstown. But the way I do my projects is I like to do different studios. Like, I'll go shop around studios. I might try dip and dabble something over here just to see how the sound is, see how the engineer is. And then if I like it enough, I'm like, all right, I'm going to do my next project here. Boom, one. Then I go to the next one, two. Like my last one, more than a rapper, I did in New Jersey, Hack and Sack, um, at the Gray Studios, yeah, the Gray Firm, yeah, with Amber. That that shit was popping. Like I fuck with it as a whole experience. They good people, but my next one, I just you know, I'm gonna try something else. I'm gonna try down here. So it's like that. I got you. All right, let's talk about that project, man. More than a rapper. Can That's you explain true. the title, man? More than a rapper. Well, my favorite. Athlete is LeBron James. You know he got more than an athlete. Mm -hmm. So I was dicky and it is what it is. I'm just gonna say it. I was dicky. So more than a rapper, it's just like a lot of people in my life, like as I got older a little bit, you know, from 19, 20, 21, 22, it seemed like it's right there, but in between those years, it's a big ass difference that a lot of people don't talk about. So like as the years was going on, as I'm talking to people, they just like Oh no, bro, you a rapper. You supposed to be in the studio all day. Da, da, da. I'm like, yeah, bro, like I, I wish I could do all that shit all day. But I'm I'm a person. Like I got real shit that I gotta do. I got people that I gotta talk to, I gotta take care of, I gotta do this, I gotta do that. So like that's really where that title came from. Like I'm more than a rapper, like I really got shit to do. Like rapping is the main thing. I'm gonna keep the main thing the main thing, but at the same time, I'm still a person. I got shit I gotta do. You know what I mean? So that's where it came from. Okay. You mentioned recording it in uh, New Jersey. So what yeah. were the vibes like on this project? The vibes is everywhere, man. I got some classic shit. I got some turn up shit. I got some shit for the shorties. Is this, this, that album right there, when I blow up, that's going to be the one. People look back on like, yeah, that's the sleeper. That's the one we all missed, for sure. It's, it's, it got so many different vibes on there and it got Features on there, it got hype shit, turn up shit. It got like smooth car shit you just ride to. It's, it's an all around project for real. Um, G Baby Freestyle, man. Mm -hmm. This is your latest release, right? Right. What can you tell us about this song in this video? Like this song, G Baby, it's just me talking my shit, man. It's just me getting some, getting some aggression out. Cause I know in my personal life, sometimes I be a little laid back like sometimes, but that song is just getting my aggression out. Like a lot of built up shit, get my aggression out. And I'm fucking with the drill scene right now. New York up there, right? Two hours right above me. 
So it was a drill beat. And right now I'm working on a project. It's going to be called Bigger Than Life. So it's going to have the titles. It's going to be either people that I think are bigger than life or like certain like events and things that I think are bigger than life, like are just like legendary, like everybody know about it. So like G Baby, the movie Hardball, I feel like that's something most people, you know what I'm saying? You got to know that, John. So, and it is close to me. So that's why I did that. The G Baby, call it G Baby. Mention them all the time and then John. So that's where I come from. Okay. So bigger than life, man. Yeah, bigger than what life. What should we expect to hear on this? On bigger than life, you should expect, you should expect a part two of more than a rapper, but more like specific. So each song, like I said, it's going to be somebody name in that drum. So it's going to be tied in a little bit to what something they're known for. So like I got a song that I'm doing right now. It's called OJ Simpson. So I'm going to tie in <laughs> some of that. You know what I'm saying? Some of that's going to be, you know how in the case, the shorty was like his wife. I think she was doing something like Hello Brent Woods in the morning for people. If you know, you know what that is? Uh -uh. So during the case, one of um, the wife's friends, she released a book and she was telling that her and the wife, I think her name is Nicole. And what they would do is they would give niggas top in the morning and they would call it Hello Brentwoods. So, you know, I tie a little bit of shit of that in there. Like, you know I mean? So it's shit like that that's going to be in there that that's a little more specified. Okay. That if you know about them, you're going to really get it for them. Okay. Who are some of the producers you've been working with for this next project? Uh, for this next project, uh, producers, it's been like from producers from my city. Um, like, for instance, Moe's, Dayon Moe's I'm working with. Like, we've been tapping in. Um, producers from my city and also like Heem Juicin. He He's not from my city, but he's from around the area. So I fuck with him. Um, and I be getting a lot from B-Stars, man. Like, I go on B-Stars, I just search all day. Like, search all day. And then if I find one I like, I hit up the producer, I, I, then I buy it, and then I go from there. Okay. Any features you plan to put on there? It's all going to be real. It's going to be features on there, man. I'm not sure exactly who yet. I got people in mind, but you know how it be. Sometimes you reach out, oh, we're not doing features right now. Da, da, da. So I might have to double back on something else and be like, all right, I got to try to get somebody else on this job. So it's not set in stone. But it's definitely some features that I got in mind that I want to work with. Okay. For sure. Release date? What do you think? In the summer? I'm thinking, I'm thinking not this summer. We're gonna put the FSG tape out in the summer. Okay. Probably like July or something. But I'm thinking like November, December, October. It's gonna be around those months. But I drop when I get a feeling. I know the feeling when I get it. And I'm gonna drop and it's gonna be crazy. Like, of course, I'm going to have some promotion with it and have a little plan drawn up. But when I feel it, I'm going to feel it and we're going to go crazy. Okay. What's the next single or video you plan to drop? The next single video, it's the same thing. It's going to be called um, Mr. Miyagi. It's going to be Mr. Miyagi. You know, like I was saying with the names, everybody knows Mr. Miyagi. Mm -hmm. yeah, so the song is it's more like a, like a bouncy turn up kind of song. So... The video, I wanted to be lit. I wanted to be lit, vibes everywhere. And I'm going to have it a double video, though. You know how just a lot of videos, just one video. I'm going to have it a double video. It's not going to be too long, though, because you know the attention span is down now, you know. But, yeah, we're going to do a double video, and the vibes is just going it's going to hit a, it's going to hit a switch, and it's going, it's going to be solid for sure. Can't wait to see it, man. <laughs> hey, thank you. It's going to be all that. What's some of your goals? What are you trying to accomplish, say, in the next year, man? In the next year, I want to take my career to the next level, man. Like, I feel like I'm, I'm further than when I first started. Came a long way. But it's still such a long way to go. The job is never done. It's never done. So, like, say, say I started here. Say I'm right here. I want to go right here. I want to take that step, that next step. And I understand it's a lot of things that come with it. You got to be ready for it. But I'm there. We there. My team there. We ready. Gotcha. Any last words? Any shout outs before we wrap it up here today, Ralph? 
Uh, yeah, man. Shout out to my bitch, man. You know what I mean? Nora G, they ain't my girl. She got a boyfriend, but shout out to my bitch, man. <laughs> ah, no doubt. I ain't worried about none of that. She mine at the end of the day. You know what I mean? Shout out to the team. Shout out to all my bros. You know what I mean? Free now. Free love. Free the gang. Free all that. You know what I mean? We coming. Remember that. Up a Marty fashion, Mr. Gucci with my Valentinos. In my hood, it's a regular shootout, but it sounds like we throwing torpedoes. A mission dependent, yeah, she got her own. 